For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Hey, somebody step in. Hey, hey. Romance. Hey, hey. I said, goodness of God lead to your repentance. The goodness, the blessings, and the mercy she sang about there. Wow. Oh, my God. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Turn to 2 Kings while I say a word or two about that. I'll tell you, just, that just bless my heart. Bless my heart. Second Kings uh, chapter 11. I didn't use the chapter 11. But I think about how many blessings God's given me. Yes. Wow. Didn't deserve them. But I can't count them. It says they're new every morning. They're like the sand by the sea. But wow. Hallelujah. For the goodness of God. And one of those mercies, as we go through these, we're going to look at some mothers this morning. Some bad mothers and some good mothers. <coughs> and I want to thank God again for my mother. Hey. That loved hey. me. She had five kids, left us seven in the house at one time, kept a clean house, kept everything running. That's what God says we all, the mothers ought to do, and that's what she did. She guided the home, but she was never too busy to pick us up and rock us when we were small. And always had time, even though she was a busy lady, cooking and cleaning and working, trying to do the things of a uh, uh, mother. So I want us to, to read, uh, we start off with just three verses this morning, 2 Kings chapter 11, the first three verses, and then we'll be moving around in, in the same chapter, or in the same rather uh, book. And so follow along with me. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord, six years, and Adeliah did reign over the land. Father, please, in Jesus' name, help us to, to, to look at these scriptures as we go through here, the bad ones, the good ones. Oh, Father, I pray in Jesus' name you might help us to grasp some things from both, uh, some, learn some things not to do and some things to do, and, and would you help us to have a new appreciation for our mothers, and many of them stayed home and, and uh, didn't go out to work and did without so they could take care of us. And that was your, your plan for them. So I love you, Lord, and thank you for my mother. And thank you for these mothers that are here today. And, and even those that would like to have been mothers, and, and um, we have relatives, too, that would like to have children in camp. But nonetheless, you bless them, too, this morning. I pray that you'll bless them all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, in a day of ERA, <coughs> And now, N-O-W, acronyms, you know, for uh, National Organization of Women, whatever it is, means anyway. Never know. I can't keep up with all these acronyms. But uh, many women are marching today, and I understand they're marching against the, the, the courts now because they're thinking about getting ready to change the road v. Wade. And I understand they're even marching today, and that's, that's a sad thing. Uh, a lot of them are marching against equal this and equal that, and, and now they're marching against, uh, they want to stop murdering the babies, and they don't want them to. And, that, and, that, and are we in a sad place in America? Oh, how we need to pray for America. Oh, some of them aspiring to be president, uh, running corporations and all. I mean, I'll tell you, it's time to honor godly women today, okay? And godly mothers. And uh, 
and raising their children to love Jesus. Boy, that's important. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. This is what God said about it. This is where, listen, we all have our place. And God has a work for each one of us. He says in 1 Timothy 5, 14, I will therefore that the younger women, number one, marry, bear children, guide the house, and give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And I, you know, those that can have children, God knows that, and he understands that, and he can use you in other ways. I know somebody in there, Church service this morning. Probably better mother than more people than, than I. Anyway, got plenty of nieces, nephews, and, and uh, I appreciate it. And uh, my little Beth, my niece, you know, can't have children. She love just tried so hard. She'd love to have children. Uh, pray for her too. She's having headaches all the time now. And so anyway, not a good thing. But what, what, that's what God intended for women to do. That doesn't mean that all women are able to have children. But it, that's, that's his intent, intention. He didn't mean you to run for president. He didn't mean you to run a corporation. He meant for you, uh, boy, I tell you, listen. And I know it takes a lot today. Usually both have to work just to make a living. It's not like it was back way back when. Um, but Exodus chapter 20, and that's the, you know, you, when I say chapter 20, it ought to perk your ears up. You know, that's a Ten Commandments chapter. Said, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And that's the first commandment we promise. Think about that. And so we honor you, Mother's Day. A little later on, we'll honor the fathers, and we'll we'll go through that too. Um, June, I guess it is. But nonetheless, we are to honor them, and they are worthy of honor. Uh, number one. Athaliah, the ungodly. That's just all I knew how to say of what to say about her. Uh, and I guess the story here matches our protest down there with the Supreme Court there. And, and Tom says they're even protesting. I don't have my TV on now, but even churches and others. And it's sad. It's sad what, what we've come to. But if it reminds you that we're a heathen nation and makes you pray more for America, maybe that'll be a good thing. Maybe you'll take something out of it. But Adelaide was just like that crowd down there today that's marching against it. Uh, I mean, we have one of the most horrible, heinous, barbaric crimes. Can you imagine anybody could commit? Um, she wanted to rule. And she intended to rule. It didn't matter what it took. She murdered all of her grandchildren in order to rule and reign for a little while. Only a few years. They didn't let her wait too long. They finally got a hold of that. Not too many years. But oh, my friend. She destroyed all the royal seed. I don't know how many wives King uh, uh, Ahaziah had or son. And I don't know how many wives and I don't know how many children there were. Uh, probably a lot. I would assume a lot. But she murdered all of them but one and of course, God kept that one back in order to satisfy our lust for power. I believe it's a picture of what's happening today. Could we not say that's exactly what's happening today? I mean, they're saying, you're not going to take my right. You're right. You don't have a right to murder anybody. Can you imagine? But that's what's happening. And because some have a selfish desire to rule or um, I don't know, people are destroying their own children and grandchildren. I know some years ago, a few years after we were saved, we were growing in the Lord and teaching Sunday school, my wife and I, and uh, I don't know what time it was, but she was uh, working part-time. She, she worked a full-time job and worked a part-time job at the dime. We call it a dime store. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you know what a dime store is. I don't think you buy anything for a dime now, but anyway, that's what they call it. And I think the young lady worked there or, or came in there. I don't remember. I remember. I can picture in my mind, though. But uh, she became pregnant. And uh, my wife counseled with her and tried to talk to her about having the baby and not, not, not putting on a boarding in and uh, not murdering it. And uh, tried her best. But you know who talked her into having the abortion? And she did. Her mother and dad. Guilty of killing their own grandchildren. 
capitalized, not hey, that's not that's an old story, but we still got up to date stories to tell. That's right. I mean, people are still doing it every day, killing their own grandchildren, grandparents, killing their own grandkids. Oh my, what a sad thing that this woman just to just to have power for a little while. And it didn't last too too many years, and they took her out. In fact, they executed her. But we get that's another story. Turn with me to chapter twelve. Flip over to chapter twelve, and uh, in that verse one, it says, "In the seventh year of Jehu, Je Jehoash began to reign." And this is Joash. This is the long version of it. The, the short was the Joash. He's the one that we just read about in the last story that, that they sneaked out and, and saved him out and kept him in the house of God. And, and he's now he's re beginning to reign. And 40 years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba. And Jehoash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. All his days were in Jehoiada, the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense in the high places. Jehoiada said to the priest, All the money of the dedicated things that is brought into the house of the Lord, even the money of everyone that passeth the account, the money that every man is set at, and all the money that cometh in into any man's heart to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priest take it to them, every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever any breach shall be found. Uh, what a wonderful story here. Here's a man that loved the house of God. He loved the house of God because he was in it for six years. I mean, that's where he lived, hiding from the queen, huh? hiding from his grandmother, who would have killed him too if she could have. And he had a particular love for the house of God. Boy, I like that. Oh, my friend, we ought to love the house of God. And he, he, he said, all the money that comes in, and however it comes in, and he named the different ways it come in there, he said, we need to take it and, and uh, let the priest and every man his acquaintance, if he knows somebody that can do carpenter work, he knows somebody that can, can repair the sinks or the, uh, the, the, the plumbing or whatever, you know, whatever they had to repair. That. He said, just let's fix it up. Let's fix the house. I like it when people uh, like to keep the house of God clean. And uh, many of you have helped clean the church and do help clean the church and, and mow the lawn. And Bobby's out there cutting that tree the other day. You know, those are things that people love the house of God. And uh, all of you are, are probably uh, guilty at one time or another of, of doing something like that. And so I commend you. I appreciate that so much. But he had a particular love for the house of God. The Bible says... In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know what her name means? Zebiah means the graceful. It means gazelle. It means swift and graceful. She must have, she knew something about grace, didn't she? Her yes. name pictured grace. And she was a good mother, a godly mother, and she, uh, uh, I mean, she was the one of the wives of this king that had died, and, and I don't know how many wives he had again, but, but she was a good one. And she raised that son who had, had to hide him to raise him, but nonetheless, she raised him. And I'll tell you, when a child gets grown and still serving God, it tells me something about mama. Tell you something about mother, it does. I mean, you can just say what you want to, but I tell you, listen, you think about it. It was grace. It was grace that allowed him to grow up. It was grace that brought you and how loud you grew up and brought you there. You could have been aborted. I could have been aborted. Huh? It was grace of God. What? Well, thank God for his grace. Why are you shouting the praises of God? Man. It's God's grace that brought him to the throne. More than that, it was God's grace that brought him to Jesus. And it was God's grace that brought me to Jesus and you too. If you know the Lord that is your Savior, it's God's grace. The Bible says in verse 2, Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of the Lord. Joash means Jehovah's given. Boy, Jehovah gave this man. He was a good king. Verse 4 and 5, Joash loved the house of God, didn't he? In the house of the Lord, back in chapter 11, we read a few moments ago, verse 3, that he was hid for six years. 
He loved the house of God. I love the house of God. I won't tell you, I, 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 don't, I don't think that people say they love the house of God, but they're not here. And it won't come on Sunday night. It won't come Wednesday when you can't, you know, those that can't. We need, I appreciate the people that really love the house of God. They don't come every time they get a chance. Well, I appreciate that. Man. You know, as in the house of God, I, I became, acquainted, became acquainted with grace. That's where I found That's where I found grace in the house of God. With you in church, not that. You don't have to be. You can be saved in other places. That's where I got saved in the house of God. That's where I became acquainted with grace. Man, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where I got saved. That's where I got saved. Right down there. Not here, but a little Southern Baptist church in South Carolina. That's where I was hidden. <laughs> the blood of Jesus. Yeah. He was hidden for six years. That's where I was hidden. That's where I was hidden from the devil. Don't you think? I mean, she was a devil. They, they were hiding him from his own grandmother who was a picture of the devil. She was full of the devil. Boy, that's where I got it. At church. I was hidden from the devil. <laughs> And by the way, the devil would have murdered me too and he would have murdered every one of you if he could. Huh? We were hidden in grace. Hidden in the palms of his hands. Hidden in the wall. Oh, my hands is just, wow. Mothers, if you know anything about this wonderful grace, just keep on teaching them. I don't care if they're grown. I don't care if they're grandchildren. Come on, whoever, your great grands whatever, whoever it is. You just keep teaching them. You keep telling them about Jesus. Not just coincidence. Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, or here he's called Jehoash. His mother did not care about being queen. Isn't that, isn't that something? Now listen, listen to me. Listen to me. What I, what I say. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give them an occasion to have she, she she could have been queen. She was one of the king's women, wife, wives, concubines, whatever. Huh? She didn't care about getting me a queen. She, she, she wanted to fulfill the role that God had for her. And that's what we all want to fulfill, the role that God has for us. Either side. That of raising her children to love Jesus. Not, she did. She did a good job. Because here he is repairing the house of God. Somebody let it go down, huh? I guess his mom, his grandmother did <laughs> that, huh? And then whoever was before her, maybe Ahaziah there, he might have let it go down a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to tell you something. We need to, we need to do what, what God's called us to do and, and be what he wants. I believe you'll be glad you did. You say, I, I, I never did run a corporation. Some of you women got that. You know, I never did uh, get to be president. And some of you women want to be president. No, no, if you just do what God, I believe you, you're going to face God one day and you're going to be glad you did what God said. Yeah. And I'll tell you, some of these women that never, I tell you, they're going to be honored. Some of you are going to be honored for doing it. I, I've used this before in a message one time. I like Billy Sunday. I was talking about him a while back, talking about how worldly, you know, he didn't believe it was worldly Christians anymore than the heavenly devil. I, I like to use his saying. But he said one time, any old stick will do for a dad, but children got to have a godly mother. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> any old stick will do for a dad. <laughs> No, you got to have a godly dad too. You, he, he was just a, but you do need a godly mother because mothers have a special, special place there, special love. Oh, my friend. We used to say, the hand that rocked the cradle rules the nation. So that's a, that's a truth to that. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the nation. If she's raising, yeah, oh yeah. And she may be raising uh, George Washington, maybe raising a, you know, whatever, one of these great presidents that we have. Number three, uh, turn with me to chapter 15. We're still in 2 Kings, chapter 15. We're going to talk about Jekyll I. Chapter 15. <clears throat> chapter 15 and verse 1. In the 20th the seventh year of Jer Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jechaliah uh, of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Uh, 
well, that's a good thing doing what the daddy has done, but I'm going to tell you, yes, you know what daddies, when they're kings, huh? They don't have much time for the kids. They probably take a little time, but guess who? Huh? Jack Lye, she's the one in, in the teaching and training there, don't you think? She had, it means Jehovah has prevailed. <laughs> I like that, Jack Lye. These men were not perfect now, these last two, Joash or Joash and, uh, and uh, Azariah. But they loved God. They were saved people. Uh, they didn't do everything they should have done. We'll talk about that a little later when we get to, to that in a few minutes to the next man. But, but, uh, but they did a lot. Repaired the house of God and, and did that which was right. And yeah. Oh, they believed the Lord and they followed Him. Jack Lye says, Jehovah has prevailed. Well, you know what? She prevailed in winning her son to Jesus. <laughs> It'd be a good thing if we could get that. Some of us don't, you know, still have loved ones that are not saved. We're still trying to get them. Oh, my friend. One thing about it, after he was grown, he was still following Jesus. Huh? That's right. Uh, he, yeah, 16 years old. And he still followed Jesus. Boy, I tell you, you see the 16-year-olds out there today, what they're doing? <laughs> it drives you nuts. <laughs> drive you insane. But you don't ever want to think about it. But I mean, he was following God. He had a godly mother, that's why. Oh, yeah, it said his daddy did right too in the sight of the Lord, and that was certainly an influence on him. But, brother, that mother was the one that was there with him day in and day out, and she prevailed. That's what her name means. She prevailed. She always prevailed. And, boy, after he has grown, he's still serving God. Third John chapter uh, 1, verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Brother, that's all you can say. That Jack I could say that. She said, I will tell you. Let me tell you about my son, that's right. Let me tell you about it. 60 year old, he's still walking with God. <laughs> huh? Still walking with God. Oh my. If you don't have children that are walking with God, and you need to just, amen, pray, keep praying, and don't get discouraged. But uh, mothers, you, you not only have to teach them, you have to train them, don't you? There's a difference there. And you got to set a godly example, too. Really do. And I believe this woman did. I believe the last two women that we talked about did a pattern you gotta they need a pattern they need to see something they don't just need you to tell them that it's wrong to do this they need to see you doing right following the lord well that's important uh important to that uh, so anyway she prevailed in her prayers god answered her prayers and he was still living for the lord after he was 16 and, and on of course uh, in years to come there he uh, reigned, uh, what was it, 52 years? So he, man, he walked with God all those times. Matthew says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, I, I quoted a lot of times in preaching on prayer. It says, Ask and shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8 says, For everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone. everyone. And he that seeketh find it. And him that knocketh it shall be opened. Everyone. What an invitation to pray. And yet Christians a lot of times will not pray about things. Come on, we will not pray about things. We can all forget sometimes to pray about something. And I've done it. You've done it. I know as well as I know my own name that I'm supposed to pray when I lose something. You ever lose something? I'll hunt 30 minutes and then God will tap me on the shoulders and you ain't prayed about that. Pray about it, find it. It's like that. Hat me over and over. I mean, we just get, you know, get one set. Not, you know, we're, just, we're still in the flesh, aren't we? What a, I mean, everyone that asks can receive it. And he that seeketh find it, you say, but, but I've been praying for years. That, that young man ain't got right yet. Or I've been praying for years. And my loved one or brother or sister, somebody ain't got right yet. Just keep praying for them. You keep praying for them. Don't you stop praying. That's the only hope you got. That's the only hope I got. Hey. That don't challenge you. Show your children how to live for God by the way you live. Just yeah, and dads too, and all of us. I tell you, you got to. They got to grasp the truths that you're teaching them, and the, and the best way to do it is to let them see. Uh, let them see that uh, in leather, shoe leather, we call it. The godly mother's important. <clears throat> if you're ever going to prevail with her children, I believe they are. I believe as many a mother and a grandmother have prevailed in prayer. I'm, I know dads have too, but boy, a lot of times it's been the mother, hasn't it? 
Turn over to 2 Kings chapter 18. 2 Kings chapter 18. Put one over there. I'm going to talk about Abijah. Uh, literally Abijah. <coughs> Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, boy, we're getting to a good king now. We're going we to find out them last two kings was good. They repaired the house of God. They lived for God. It says they did that which was right inside the Lord. But brother Hezekiah going to beat them all. It says Hezekiah, uh, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was it when he began to reign. He's a little older than the last one, sixteen, and the one before him was seven. <laughs> hey, pretty young, isn't it? Oh my, he's twenty-five, and he reigned twenty and nine years. His mother's name also was Abai, Abijah, but Abai. She was the daughter of Zechariah. Guess who Zechariah was? Brother, he was a priest. I mean, he was a great man of God. And guess what? He raised a great daughter. And guess right, she, she, what she became, she became a great mother. And it, listen to what happened to his guy. And he did, verse 3, that which was right inside the wall. He said that about them others, didn't he? According to all that his, David his father did. No, he didn't say that about them others, huh? I mean, he went way further. He went like David. He says he removed the high places. Huh? They, they didn't do that, them other boys. They, they were still godly men. They, they loved the Lord. They did a lot of things. He removed the high places and break the images. Cut down the groves. That's where they worshipped. Oh, heathen worship services. Break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For under those days the children of Israel did burn incense uh, uh, to it. And he called it Nehushtan, which means the brazen serpent. But, but you remember, Moses raised that brazen serpent and anybody that would look, would live. Look and live. That's where we get that song. Look and live, my brother. Live. If you just look at the serpent, they got bitten. They would live. But now they've made it an idol. After all those years. Verse 5. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. So that after him. Watch it now. After him was none like him. Among all the kings of Judah. Nor any that were before him. All the way back to David. For he claimed to the Lord. Did you ever have a, You ever see a little kid. Get, get the daddy around the leg and just, just ride, ride and hang on there. You know, sit on his foot and, and ride. Yeah, buddy, that's cleaving the Lord. You get a hold of God like that, you're going to get something. I want to tell you something. That's, that's the picture in my mind what he's meaning to He says, you cleave to the Lord. Woo, man. Oh, my friend. He claimed to the Lord, verse 6, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, watch this, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Syria and, and served him not. He refused to pay taxes and, and to serve under that, that uh, devil there. He refused to do it and God honored it. And boy, I tell you, you talk about it. Abai means Jehovah is a father. <laughs> That's what Abai means. Abijah. And here we have Hezekiah's mother. And from the count, the way that Hezekiah walked, brother, I won't tell you. She was a godly woman, had a godly a priest for a father, and, and he would have had it for a grandfather. And the other kings followed the Lord and did good. But if you look back at verse 4, he removed the high places. Verse 5, he trusted the Lord God of Israel. Verse 6, he clave to the Lord. Ooh, man. And verse 7, the Lord was with him. Amen. I tell you, if you do those things, the Lord be with you, and the Lord will prosper you, and he will, whether wherever you go, I mean, you, God will help you and bless you, and you can do that. That's not just a story for, for us to read and have a good uh, Mother's Day service. Or, and, no, no, you can do that. All of us can. And uh, mother, if you want your son or daughter to pray, read the Bible, walk with God, live God, and trust the Lord, plead to the Lord, keep his commands, you need to train them, don't you? And a lot of times in, in the case where we talk about the normal way it used to be, the dads went out to work and they weren't there as much. <clears throat> They're important. We'll find that out in June, I guess. <laughs> God give us a message for that. But nonetheless, uh, mothers, we need a godly mother, don't we? We need to train them and train them and, and to keep those commands and do those things. Spend much time in prayer for them. Uh, it's, you say you're busy. You're busy. Hardly have time doing this. Take time. You have to stop. Make time. 
Ask God to make a woman or a man of God out of them. Ask, ask God to do that. Ask Him to make them what they ought to be and what, what Jesus wants them to be. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Please do not twist that up. I don't know how many people I got, I got ill with. I've had to get ill with over the years. So many will say, Preacher, and I'm, I'm, I'm claiming that verse. And I know mine's left him, but I'm believing he's going to come back. It says he'll come back. Don't say that. It says he'll never leave. You train him and he'll never leave it. These men didn't, huh? Didn't Hezekiah say he never left? He never left God. Now, I'm glad and I appreciate it if a, if a young man or a young woman gets away from God and does come back, but that's not what that verse said. Please don't use that verse. Go get you another verse over the gate. People just twist up the word of God. Something awful. Say he'd never leave it. But his wife said, he'll not depart from it. And this man, this Hezekiah brother, he didn't, he didn't wait. He would just walk with God. Can't say that about Uzziah, can we? <laughs> uh, he ended up leprosy because he left God, didn't he? He tried to step into the priest's office. But not Hezekiah. In fact, Hezekiah got 15 years added to his life. Because he, I tell you, he's close to God. When he asked for something, God gave it to him. Ooh. Huh? It says he, he, uh, he was with him. The Lord was with him. He prospered. But a server he went for. God will do that. If you'll let him, you've got to let him. You've got to let him. Oh, my friend, how, how many of us pray? A lot of times we pray. I got tickled at Brother Barton the other day. He was talking on the radio. I get, get to hear him once in a while. I don't hear him every day. Don't have time. But once in a while I try to listen to him and eat supper about that time, maybe on a Tuesday or Thursday if I can, when I get. And he was talking about when God was dealing with him. And uh, he got down the altar one day and was praying, uh, God use me, God use me, God use me. He was begging God to use him. And said an old uh, fell out over his old preacher or old man of God uh, and walked up and put his arm on his shoulder and he said if you'll just get usable God will wear you out <laughs> if you'll just get usable God will wear you out could I tell you and me if we'll just get usable he said that made me mad <laughs> yeah. he said it made me mad he said but he was right <laughs> he was right sometimes we don't like to hear right do we <laughs> that's right but if we'll just get, it's us, it's not God. God wants to use every person in here. Just get usable and he'll wear you out. I like that. Amen. He'll wear you out. Who could I tell you? Man. Oh, mamas, teach them. And then train them. There's a difference in teaching and training. You need new books. The teaching is instructing them and giving them precept and example and experience and and, you know, trying to get them the knowledge or skill or different things like that. But training them means to direct their growth. It means to direct their growth. You watch them as they grow. My neighbor, I'm still praying for him. I hope he gets saved one day. I've got the Russian neighbors across the street. Please pray for him. I'd like to see Alex get saved. But I watched him a few weeks ago. He got out there in the yard and he was planting two trees, just two little old, probably about, you know, it wasn't much bigger than you, maybe as big as a thumb or something. I don't know, nothing about that high. Wasn't very big. And he put three little stakes in the ground, put a string, tied it around, made a little circle around it. And he'd tie a little string and pull that thing, you know. And plants are not exactly straight. And he pulled that thing up straight. Tied it off. And I noticed he came the other day and and took all that down on one of them. The other one's still little. It's still got that thing. And he tied the strings up on top of them. Pulled them down. You know what he's making them trees do? It's straight as an arrow. They wasn't straight as an arrow before. It's kind of leaning one way. Or just a little bit. But you can see it wasn't going exactly like he wanted it to go. That's what training is. I mean, it's watching your kids and, and seeing when you see their weaknesses and you see the things and, and you try to pull them back with a rope or with a little, little string that he had and, and tie them up and try to, when you see a little crookedness, you're trying to straighten them up. Man. 
Could I tell you? That's that's what training means. I mean, you you certainly you pray for them and, and you instruct them, but you've got to live godly before them, and you've got to when you see those things that are wrong, you got to kind of deal with them, huh? You got to kind of put the, pull the string a little. You might have he had to get back out there after two weeks or so or three. I don't know how long it's been. He got back. I saw him yesterday. Back out there. Straighten them out. Pull them this way. Pull. You got. You got to pay attention to children as they grow. They kind of grow a little crooked sometimes, you know. And they kind of they kind of get bent over a little sometimes. And you can see it. They get an attitude, baby. You ever get an attitude? <laughs> you ever get busted, Lord? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Yeah, buddy. Got my share. You know what my mom was doing? Training me, brother. <laughs> she wasn't just teaching me. She wasn't just telling me what to do. And she was tying that string, holding it back. <laughs> pulling that string back, brother. <laughs> Woo. Amen. That's what we ought to do. And by the way, you say mine's grown now. Well, when your grandchildren come along, you do the same thing to them. <laughs> My neighbor, I've told you this before, my neighbor, brother, she didn't count. <laughs> she didn't count. <laughs> She'll tell you she didn't count. I see her out there with a grandchild when he's quite big as nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't just telling him something. She was training him. You have to be some discipline in there. See, it's not easy. It's easy to just tell him, you know. Do what I say to you. Don't do what I do. No, but you can do that. It won't work. But to train means to direct the growth like a plant. And I thought about that as I just watched that man the other day. A few weeks ago, saw him doing it, watched him do it. He did it right, but then it wasn't exactly right later on, you know, as he got up a little bit. So he went back and straightened them out. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you something. That's what it means. It's like a plant by bending and by pruning or by tying to make it grow straight. And that's exactly what it means, and that's exactly what he was doing. The Bible says in Jeremiah, Chapter 32 and verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Don't give up on your children and grandchildren. Don't give up on them. Oh, no, it's never too late. Everybody, you say, well, I, 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 I failed and, and they're grown now and I, I didn't do right. Uh, do you know you can take back the land? Israel took back the land that they lost a long time ago to the devil. And uh, there's some other scriptures, too, that says that you can go back and and undo some things. God can, you can't, but uh, you, you can pray and ask God to, to forgive you for some failures. And I've had to ask God to forgive me many failures. <laughs> Almighty dear friend, I thank you for being a godly mother. I believe all our mothers here are godly mothers. I appreciate that so much. And mothers usually sacrifice some more than anybody else. My mother's the kind of mother, she'd give you the piece of pie. She, she, if you want an extra piece, you know, she said, I didn't bring all pie, you know. You know, that's the way mothers are. They, 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 I mean, mothers are just, just like that. They, they want the best for their children. Oh, my friend, if you know somebody in your family that's lost, not saved, you need to come and pray for them this morning. We're going to ask Sue to come to the piano. You know somebody that's lost, maybe in your family? Someone else, maybe a neighbor, maybe a neighbor, maybe a friend, maybe a co-worker, somebody you need to pray for. You say, I don't know none of that. Well, how about America? I certainly need to pray for America, don't I? I certainly need to pray for America. America's out marching because they want to kill our babies and they want to keep killing them. I, I can't. I can't get my head around that. I'm sorry, I can't. I just can't do it. That's so horrible. And we're all guilty. We're all guilty. We're all guilty of sin. We're not, not trying to run somebody else down and look downtown because when I point at you, I've got all them other fingers going back at me. We're all guilty of something. But if you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus. And if you're here watching this morning, you can ask Jesus into your heart. You say, what if I... What if I've done like that grandparents a while ago did? And, and so what if that's happened? Somebody watching maybe that, that uh, that's happened to me already. Jesus will forgive you. He'll forgive you. 
and cleanse you and save you. And, and you'll get to see that. <laughs> but oh, my friend, if you don't get saved, it's nothing but hell forevermore. Please ask Jesus to save you. The Bible says he's the way, the truth, and life. No way to come but by him. Just simply ask him in your heart. Just simply receive the gift of God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll just call and say, Lord Jesus, I'm not saved. I'm lost. I need to be saved. Would you save me? He promises. And all those that come to him, he'll know why it's cast you out. He will save you. Would you play an invitation to him? Is there any need in anybody's heart this morning? Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.